want, if you want a day in the life of Dan, just watch the movie Uncut Gems from start, <laughs> from start to finish and watch Adam Sandler being chased around by a bunch of mobsters. I think no, that's I think Dan should do. Welcome back to The Walkthrough, where we walk you through this week's trending topics in real estate. I am your co-host, moderator, and captain of BAM, Danny Deals. And as always, we have brought in a star-studded cast uh, featuring one new guest this week uh, to entertain and educate you. As always, please make sure to jam that like button as many times as you can. Joining me as always, the ever handsome, always sick content god, Mr. Eric Simon, aka the pro agent. Eric, how you doing, buddy? You uh, you dealing with sick. the sniffles over there? Little <laughs> sniffles, but this is my Jordan flu game. The Yankees just pitched a perfect game last night, and oh. I am feeling good. I'm ready to crush the walkthrough. We got two fantastic guests. Today. We got Amanda Palmieri on your team. First time performance Hi. on the walkthrough. Frequent BAM yeah. green screener. Welcome to the show. How are you, Amanda? Thank you for having me. Of I'm course. great. How are you guys? I'm doing, excited to be here. Doing fantastic. Uh, if this is the first episode. I don't look like I've gotten my ass beat in about uh, eight weeks. So I feel good, look good. And uh, speaking of feeling good, looking good, and having a great day, we have the mayor of St. Pete, <laughs> the CEO of Coffee and Contracts, Miss Haley Ingram. Haley, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me again. Of course. Did you get your mic situation figured out yet? Or are you still deadlifting <laughs> in the background there? <laughs> no, I was still trying, but I think I'm going to give up. Okay. All right. Good. Because it sounded like you were wrestling a bear. And I think that you'd actually win too is the best part. On today's episode, we are talking about key touch points to keep your clients coming back for life. Three things that are killing your Instagram engagement that you probably didn't know about. Marketing of the week and much, much more. And if you're watching, please make sure to smash the like button. All right. Topic number one, keep your clients coming back. Tom Tool. This guy is just a plethora of knowledge. Um, Tom, this is a BAM article. It will be in the show notes below. But Tom is articulating in this article here an NAR statistic about how frequent your past clients uh, will transact and how frequent they will use you. So according to this NAR study, 85% of consumers say they are likely to work with their agent again, yet only 12% actually do. 85% say that they will, and yet only 12% do. Huh. Well, why is that? They already know you, they already like you and trust you, but they decided to do another transaction without somebody, without you and with another agent. It's most likely due to these few reasons. Number one, Tom says, you relationships, you need to be making your calls to your past clients. Tom says to call them on their birthday. Who calls on your birthday? What do you guys think about that? I mean, if somebody calls me on my birthday, like I'm not answering that. I, uh, I actually have the person I bought my car from like six years ago, every year on my birthday, I get a voicemail and it's just a man saying happy birthday. <laughs> and he's like, Hey, it's Ray from Toyota of Tampa Bay. <laughs> my and, dentist messages me. So yeah. I always do remember that. I mean, but like on your birthday, like I, on my birthday people, every year. I mean, and I, I remember to get my cleaning because of it. Eric, if I called you on your birthday uh, as a realtor, would you be responding back to that? I think calling people on their birthdays creates more problem for the person whose birthday it is because then it's a hassle to return all these calls and all these text messages. So I do disagree with Tom Tool. I think you should call people on their anniversaries, possibly not their wedding anniversary, but he mentions calling people on their house anniversary. If they purchase something on January 12th, call them on January 12th and Hit him up I like and ask that. They probably yeah, that's that's idea. Idea. exactly. That like, hey, you've been yeah. yeah. It's your it's your three year anniversary since you lived in. How's it going? How's the family? What's going yes. on with Johnny's baseball team? Something like that. But I think the birthday call just becomes an absolute nuisance because then you just you just get annoyed the fact that you have to call these people back. Yes, I mean I. I like Facebook, right? You got to respond to everybody back on Facebook. Then you got people in your DMs. Then I don't even want people to know it's my birthday, you know, let alone the guy from Toyota calling me or let alone my real estate agent. So well, like, I, yeah, I think too, like when people, when agents like text you on Christmas or like all the holidays, it just seems like insincere, insincere and like they're just doing it to all their clients and you're kind of like, oh, thanks. Yes. Um, that's another time. I mean, like Byron touched on it a couple of weeks ago, I think maybe uh, six weeks ago when we did the episode, like you send a voice note or you wish him, I actually sent him like a personalized video, like, you know, Hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> he didn't answer. Uh, he is the bah humbug, but calling on a house anniversary, Eric, to your point is, is 
in my opinion, genius because you're sending them a picture of it. Um, you know, you're calling them saying, Hey, this popped up, you know, like how's the home, how's everything like that's such an easy excuse or a layup to reach out to them. Um, and Tom also goes on here to articulate 32 points of how you should be communicating, uh, with your past clients, which could be maybe a little bit aggressive, but making those calls. So whether it be that your birthday, Tom also mentioned, uh, calling around, uh, <laughs> around Halloween, uh, or around holidays. Like, what is he doing? Boo, buy another house with me. You know, like, he, was, he wasn't saying to call on Halloween. He was saying to call after Halloween. So to check in, to check in about the holidays and like what their plans are for the next year, I think. He's not okay. calling him to so ask I read them what, I read their, that wrong. He's what like, their outfits going to be for trick or treat. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's asking them what himself. they're going to be wearing for Halloween, what they're dressing up as. <laughs> yes. Uh, Amanda, um, when, when do you call clients? Like, is, I actually was just going to say, I have a new thing that I've been trying, and this is for follow-up past clients or people who have just ghosted you. So I mean, sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. If I have an appointment in an area that I've sold in, whether it's my seller or whoever, um, I kind of preface it by saying, hey, you know, I was just around your block or whatever. It reminded me of you. And nine times out of 10, they're like, oh, my God. And then I get like a barrage of pictures of the house. Um, things like that. Cause it's kind of, it's a little creepy, but not too creepy. It makes them want to, you know, open up a conversation. So I've been doing that and it seems to work. You don't so, drive, you don't drive by their house, take a picture of their house no. and say, Hey, just <laughs> no, swing no, by. I literally just like, Oh Made my God, you know, I was, I was in your neighborhood this afternoon and I, you know, I had to go, I had a showing and I thought of you, how's it going with the house? Blah, blah, blah. Like, Oh my God, Amanda, how are you? Like, this is what we did with the kitchen. And then it kind of just like segues you into like, I'm still here without yeah. being too like Merry Christmas, whatever. Yeah, without asking them what they're wearing for Halloween. Um, <laughs> him, <laughs> uh, so Tom also mentions about sending out monthly how's the market updates. Um, this is also another really good idea. Could be a little bit aggressive. Obviously, the main thing that people want to know is how much their home is worth like at, at every point in time, right? As much as Eric checks his crypto balance every single day is exactly what homeowners are doing with their Zillow's estimate. So doing that in a whether it be an email blast or some sort of video content, right? Like Chris Benjamin does a really good job of this is another really good idea. And then Tom also mentions uh, direct mail. So sending out direct mail campaigns and pieces. I mean, listen, it's just about being omnipresent, right? And it's about follow-up. That's really the, the main the main point of this article. I mean, it's what agents lack so much of. Um, and I'm very guilty of it too. Nothing burns more than when you see a house that you sold uh, relisted or you know sold again. And you're, you're sitting there like, I, these people love me. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I, you know, I, I wish this guy Merry Christmas every year. I asked him what his kids have been, you know, wearing for Halloween. Why didn't he listen to me? Uh, <laughs> or or you didn't say Halloween. No wonder why. This and yes, trapped on Halloween. Yeah. Crazy thing. But then, or then uh, you look at it and like, this has happened to me. I would probably say 10, 15 times where it's my fault. And I realize, hey, you know what? I actually haven't followed up with these people in four years. I'm a scumbag. They, they should list with somebody else. So it's a part of maturing in the business, but I think more now than ever, follow-up is very, very important. And utilizing those people that have worked with you and that know you and, and do like you and you've done a good job by, like that is your that is your bucket of people to be reaching out to. So um, the, Haley, sorry, good. I was just going to say, the, the 32 touch points, I don't think the monthly how's the market email is aggressive. I think, you know, once a month, a video of yourself for three to five minutes just saying, like, here's what's happening in the market, here are the inventory levels, and then maybe something yep. specific to that person about here's where your house is. That would be great. So it's not, yeah. you know, just a broad email blast. You make it specific to each person, although that might be a pain in the ass, but. Yeah, it's actually it, like a good value to have. Uh, yeah. I would like that. And then direct mail, he said to send once a month or once every three weeks. Are you guys doing anything direct mail wise, Dan and Amanda? Uh, I mean, I don't do it consistently enough. I would say I'm more of like a door knocker, but um, I mean, uh, we have a lot of people on the team do. Dan does, right? Yeah, I mean, I do it, but I also should be more consistent about it. I do not do it as frequent as Tom. Uh, it does get kind of expensive. So, I mean, to send the direct mail out every three weeks is that—that that is what I think thought was aggressive, not the monthly uh, email or the monthly update. Sending direct mail every three weeks or a month, um, in my opinion, like I get enough mail and enough junk as it is. It's all red light cameras. It's wedding invites. It's all just like money, <laughs> right? Like I, I look at them all like, <laughs> yeah, it's like all just tickets and 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 wedding invites. So I just throw it all out, and when I see, you know. Remax, uh, you know, happy, happy Halloween. Uh, I throw it out. So it works for some people. I know like Lisa Chinati is very successful with it, but it is about being consistent and, and staying on I it. I mean, but. we can even talk about Charles with it. So handsome home buyer for those who don't know my boyfriend. Um, he probably has the most massive spend that I've ever heard. I think he's, I 
could be wrong, but I think he's like 14 grand, like yeah. monthly, but he is sending out to like a massive amount of neighborhoods. I don't even know. And that is where most of his business comes from. Um, yeah. And sometimes people call him and tell him to buzz off, whatever. But most of his business comes from there because he's just like ingrained in their head. But he's doing it like monthly at a mass, mass scale. You know what so I like mean? that it is expensive. Yeah. Hitting people different ways, I think, is what's most effective about this is the call, the email, and the mail. It's like on Instagram showing up in highlights and feed yeah. stories and DMs and everything. It's just like you're just, like you said, engraving your name into people's heads. So great article, 32 touch points. I think this is all super doable. I never did any of these as a realtor. That's why I'm <laughs> doing this. That's Eric, uh, how, do, how do you stay in touch with the people that you work with? Uh, whether it be Facebook communities, is it kind of just all, all of the above? Like you're just being omnipresent? Yeah. I mean, we have so many different places now. We have the BAMX Facebook group, the Coffee and Contracts community. We have Instagram broadcast channels, which we're going to get into. Instagram DMs, yep. Facebook. So it's just... Yeah, I'm, I'm in touch with them at all times. It's just, it, it's, I wish I could send more specific direct messages because I think that's what goes a lot further than just posting to the feed. So I need to do a better yeah. job at that. But I think having your clients in a Discord or a Facebook group, communicating with them regularly on that is super effective. Yeah, it's all, all about being omnipresent, right? And follow up. Um, and I think we can move on because we are going to be talking about broadcast channel. And you brought this up to me. Uh, you just started one and you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh man eric just started a broadcast channel on instagram so he's going to educate us on what that even is i have no idea what it is i didn't even know that i started one on my profile right now it says let's chat i don't even know where that leads to what that means it looks horrible i look like a pervert i want it off my <laughs> bio eric tell me yes. please what is a broadcast channel how are you utilizing it and how do i get rid of it because i don't want yes it. well you don't have a broadcast channel you have a subscription service that looks like a broadcast channel so if you don't have a broadcast channel that still lives in your profile so i clicked your let's chat thing and then it <laughs> asks me to pay you 990 dollars or 999 <laughs> per month to, what are they getting for that 990 i don't know they gotta be getting well you, you have one you actually were smart with the subscriptions because you did have a mastermind for a while with those. Yes. But for the subscriptions, you're supposed to like be producing exclusive content. I just started a broadcast channel and what they are are essentially group chats to the masses. So it's like a telegram where all your followers can join, but they can't respond, but they can react with hearts and emojis and smiley faces and stuff like that. So, but yeah, go ahead, Eric. Dan. Wouldn't that wouldn't that directly compete though with the uh, with that aspect of having like a mastermind or having that exclusive content, right? Like the ten dollars a month. Well, it, for a subscription, it could compete with it. So you would definitely right. have to have different content in there. That's why I think this is going to harm subscriptions because it's like, well, why could I? Why would I want to see exclusive stuff here if I'm getting it for free from someone else? But yeah. um, the best thing about these broadcast channels is the engagement is through the roof. Coffee and contracts. I don't know. If I, I think you don't have the ability to do it yet, right? On your Instagram, Haley? I think I just got it. Okay. I think, yeah. It, I think it, it could be it, it could be huge for coffee and contracts because what I'm doing on mine is basically just exclusive Instagram tips and social media tips. But you have to give them something that they're not already getting in your feed or elsewhere. So some best practices for broadcast channels. Number one is you name it something that sparks curiosity. So I'm not just naming it the broke agent broadcast channel. I'm naming it the key to surviving real estate that gets people more in. So Haley, yours could be marketing tips, Instagram tips, social media tips, exclusive tips, something like that, because people will click on that. And then what you want to do after you start it is pull your audience to see what they want to see from the broadcast channel. So I asked them, do they want to see anything on Instagram, YouTube, emails, Facebook? They voted. And then I'll specify <laughs> voted? based on that. Yeah, they voted. <laughs> How is that funny? <laughs> well, it's just, I mean, the fact that like you have 3,000 people in there, we don't even know about this yet. And like people are already like interacting. You already okay. have like books going on. And, the I mean, engagement's that's incredible. through the roof on this. And so the engagement on a broadcast channel is like 50, 60, 70% compared to that on the feed, which is 1%, 2%. And in stories, which are all over the place, is nothing. So, <laughs> sorry. If you have something to plug, do it in the broadcast channel. Um, so is, is that affecting your, your engagement on your reels and stuff too? No. Not at all. It, they're completely separate things. There, there's no algorithm for it. So you want to keep it fun and engaging. And you also don't want to overdo the broadcast channel. So because it shows up in people's DMs, you don't want to send like five or six messages a day. You want to do it like once every two, once every three days. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, well, so, that, so it shows up in their DM. Well, I mean, I just, I think it's, an, it's just another, like, it's very good for you, Eric, I think, right? Yeah. And for people that know how to utilize it. But if you don't have the content to switch it up and change, like that could just be another, wow. just another place of, of content, right? Like, okay. and it's different than what you're posting out there. It kind of feels like another job. How can we use it as agents? You could do exclusive listing sneak peeks behind the scenes. You could plug, <laughs> I, you don't, could, I don't think anyone like would watch that though. No, like, is, right. Then wouldn't I put that on my, on my feed? You could put that in your story. I'm trying to figure out how agents can utilize this. I think uploading I know, listing oh. previews could be good, right? Like, is it just check. word? Like when I first saw it, I immediately thought of clubhouse. So I don't know if you guys remember clubhouse. Um, it like evaporated pretty quickly, but is it words? Can you put videos? Is it, yeah, you what could is put, it? You could put audio messages. So you could, I recorded okay. myself saying like, welcome to my brain, welcome to hell. And that got like a bunch <laughs> of funny reactions. So you could give market updates, audio market updates to your go. clients once a week, where it's just like, here's the week market update. Here's what's going on here. Inventory levels, kind of like that email that Tom tool wants you to send, except you're just sending it to the group chat. You could also really send good. personalized videos and you could send text. What if you uh, just did like coming soon's that like one day before you post it about it or something? Yeah, exactly. Like be the first people to see the new listings. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't I think know. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty I, cool. For me, I just feel like it's just another kind of like, you know, another place to be putting content. You have to come up with another set of content. I feel like it's, it's a lot of work, but I mean, listen, you have 3000 people in, in, in literally like a week and a half and it's building more of a community too. So those people are probably commenting on all of your stuff. And there's got to be some direct correlation to like your actual Instagram engagement now, because you have so many people that are DMing you or, well, or in your DM. I think they're more likely, like you said, to feel part of the community and feel closer to the creator or the person that's doing it. So mm-hmm. instead of thinking the broke agent is just like a machine pumping out content, if I talk in it or I show my face more, like I posted a picture of Miles in it, like it's just a little bit more intimate stuff. Like I'm not going to upload a picture of my golden doodle to stories necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> but I will to the broadcast channel just because it's kind of more like a peek behind the scenes. I do uh, I do a close friends list right now with, um, I just like have 80 people on there. I think I posted on a story one time, like, hey, if you want to be in the close friends list, um, you know, let me know. And um, we Eric, are just are you, like- Are you in the close friends? Are you in that, Eric? I've never seen that green button on mine mm, appear, so yeah. I don't believe I am. Yeah, me neither. Oh, I, don't, I don't use it too, too much. Um, <laughs> But, or else, yeah, you guys would all be included. Um, but no, I just get, it's like members and I, and I get like an exclusive group of members that I ask them for feedback, like, just like, you know, me to them, like, Hey, what do you think about us adding this or that kind of stuff? And I feel like that's been, I feel like that would be a really good idea for an agent to get feedback from like past clients or potential clients. Like, Hey, what do you think about this post that I'm going to post? You know, that's, like, yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Add your clients to your close friends list. The close friends list can be a little creepy too when you get added to someone else's. And you're I like, love it. Yeah. Even it can, like, it's like I went on a date dash so with funny. this person when I was like 19 years old. And yeah, I, I love it. I was like, wow, list. we're close friends. That's so yeah. nice. Yeah. I went and to Python. Right with them. More, and I add them to mine too because I'm yeah. like, oh, we're close friends. So welcome to the list. You know, I'm like that. <sighs> but you would else but You know what though? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what else works? You're right. Go ahead. Tee that up. That's what I was about to do. You know what else really works? If you want to learn about broadcast channels and all this stuff before it even goes to your Instagram, you should join BAM X. This is the number one education platform in the game. We got mm-hmm. Haley's Canva course. We got Tom Tools objection course. We got my Instagram course. You can learn everything I'm talking about and actually see it. Use code yes. walkthrough for 10% off. Or actually, you know what? Don't use code walkthrough. Use code USA for 15% Woo. off. Up Woo. until July 4th. How about that? That is oh, the man. cheapest introduction to BAM Max. Literally, it's 10 bucks a month. It's a coffee a month and you get exclusive live streams. You get all of our course content and you get to chat to us creators in our Facebook page. So join it. There's a link down in the description. BAM Max. Code USA, baby. All right, right. on to the next topic and on to uh, basically Instagram engagement. We're going we're gonna to stay on marketing uh, right now. How to utilize, nope, that's going to be the last topic. We're now going to talk about uh, three things that are killing your Instagram engagement and what to do instead. This was by Sarah Lentz and Agent Marketing. This will be in the show notes. And this was Brock Levin Johnson, as we have uh, mentioned on this show many, many times, did an exclusive, exclusive refer members only 
by the way, Refer is the number one referral platform in the world. And if you're not in it, you probably should, but your city's probably already taken. So how did I reach out to Cassidy uh, or Eric uh, to get in there? But Brock Eleven Johnson went on and basically three main points uh, that I took out of here that I'm doing wrong too. Uh, and what could be really hurting your engagement. Number one, that your hashtags when you're posting, they're too general, right? So me and Eric were talking and my hashtags, when I do use them, like I literally do real estate uh, sales. <laughs> uh, I do the most generic of generic ones with like 2 million you know, views. And then I just get spam uh, comments the entire time. The second thing that he had mentioned or, or second biggest thing that he mentioned was giveaways that ask people to follow for a chance to win. So, hey, go follow Lil Wayne and, uh, you know, comment uh, your, your favorite quote of his and then go follow these 10 people for a chance to win a $50 Starbucks gift card. Never going to work. Third thing is saying link in bio in your caption. You're basically redirecting somebody now to just more steps for them to have to watch something. So those three things were highlighted here in this article. Those are three things that I that I do, minus the Lil Wayne situation. Amanda, uh, I'm going to kick it to you first right now. Okay. Your engagement has gone up, I mean, the last year, a ton. What are yeah. like you do some very generic hashtags? Uh, uh, <laughs> article through what, what have you learned? Are you, are you stalking my hashtags? No, I just have to comment on every single one. You know what? I haven't been doing them a lot, but so I don't have that many followers. I think I'm on the cusp of 6,000. But for me, when I started two years ago, I had like 800 followers. So this is like a big deal for me. Um, but consistently posting, I think, is the number one thing. Um, mm. I used to post like one time a week. I think, however many you know, you feel comfortable with, but yes, I do use the hashtags more specific to long Island and our market. And I have gotten a lot of local like businesses and followers from that. So, you know, it's for those, I don't know if you guys know Suffolk County, Nassau County, but it's the towns that I'm in. I'm hashtagging always Suffolk County, always Nassau County, um, always realtors of long Island, like very super niche to us. And that's where I get most of my followers. What are you laughing at? Well, I'm laughing because I do the complete opposite and I'm an absolute Yeah, jabron. no, you, you, you get like the spam, like promote, promote or FX, whatever, when you do like the more general hashtags. But I do use those, but I'm more specific to Long Island, Long Island real estate, small business. Yeah. And I find that I get a lot of people in the community messaging me or whatever. They found me from there. Haley, uh, how are you utilizing hashtags? Did you learn anything here from Brock Eleven Johnson? Um, have you ever promoted a giveaway with a little Wayne page, or am I the only one? Oh well, yeah, no, I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I feel like for for me, where I'm seeing like the most engagement come in is um, by engaging with other people and other accounts. When I was an agent, I used to like go to um like the local saint pete page and like follow people that were interacting with that page which is kind of a little like a little slimy maybe uh, but i actually ended up like there would be like i had one person came to an open house and was like oh my gosh i follow you on instagram like i don't even know how i found you and in my head i was like i know how you found me. <laughs> <laughs> you're moving here and you follow saint pete and then i followed you and then you saw me and then you followed me and then um so that was a big thing when i was an agent and then like also, I just feel like Instagram stories, even now, that's like where I am always like, it's just like a great way to just start a conversation. Like you can just post yourself and say anything and you get so you can get so many responses if you do it right. Yep. Um, but yeah, cool. hashtags, I just try to, I'm, I haven't been doing too many. I've been doing like around three hashtags and trying to focus more on like keywords in the caption. Haley, do you ever do hashtags in your story? So this is something that I just learned. Uh, see, I, I apparently live on planet Mars. I, apparently you can like post a story and then you could do hashtags on the story and you can hide it I and that boosts yeah, your story. I, 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 I don't, I could be wrong, but I just like, don't understand. I don't get the point of that. Cause your stories are only going to be up for 24 hours. So like when, when I search hashtags, I use it like to find, like I use it to find my hairstylist, like hashtag St. Pete hair. Then I can look at the photos. And, but I wouldn't see her story because that disappears in 24 hours, you know? So I just like, I don't get that. Yes, yeah, so maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe I'm just wasting all my time putting like hashtags in my stories. Hashtags and hiding them in the stories. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. I feel like people really aren't looking at stories if they're going to hashtags. Yeah, I think it's stories are more for people that already follow you. Like it's right. not yeah. for being discovered by anyone. Yeah, yeah and, and Haley, I love your point too about communicating or, or searching via this, like, you know, to find your hairstylist and all those things. I think um, like my most engagement or the uh, times where my account is like super active, like right now I have a ton of videos and pictures up from the gala 
with people chirping me with people like you know showing behind the scenes of stuff like that's really where my most like powerful engagement comes from is the dms um mm -hmm. eric you are the guru shed some light on us you, you were there live what did brock 11 have to say and uh am i an idiot for posting hashtags on my story no well, yes, the story okay. I think is a waste of time. So you are an idiot when it comes to that. But I think when it comes to actual general hashtags, the bigger the account, the more general with hashtags you could go probably. So if you do have a niche audience like Amanda doing the hashtag Long Island Realtor, hashtag specific markets, that makes complete sense because it's a smaller audience. And those are the clients she's going after. If she starts using stuff like hashtag sales, hashtag real estate, you do just get the spam bots. But I was talking Please. to... Luca actually agents who's been using a lot more broad hashtags and he's been going like super viral with a bunch of videos. So he's reaching an audience outside of the real estate industry by doing more broad hashtags. Like, I don't know what exactly he's using, maybe hashtag sales, humor, sales, cold calling, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. whatever your post is, just make sure that the hashtags apply to what that post is. So don't do yeah. hashtag real estate. If you're posting yourself, at the gala or if it has nothing to do with real estate <laughs> or if you're posting yourself at the beach or something like that, right? Like yeah. you can do hashtag Santa Monica beach if you're at the Santa Monica beach. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who cares. Hashtags to me are, are not yes. as relevant. Like it helps categorize your videos mm -hmm. to people who are searching and it, it could help put you in, in the discover page, but focus more on the content than the actual hashtags for the yes. giveaway things though, Dan, I agree with Brock. Like you don't want to tell someone to go follow an account but you do giveaways yeah. in a really unique way. So why don't you break down how you do giveaways and how they've been effective? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just trying to, you know, get that engagement and trying to give back, uh, but also selfishly promote a listing or a video. So I don't say go follow anybody. I just, every time I do a video, I'll tell them to guess a number. I'll say, guess Jordan's favorite number. Something that like, you know, I have no idea. Guess the list price for X amount of money. And it's just kind of like a game and it builds a community. And, you know, I, I see the same people commenting every time every time I do it. And it's just a, a fun way for me to like selfishly get engagement, but also give back. And um, yeah, I don't have anybody following Lil Wayne or anything like that, but the giveaways for me have, have crushed. I mean, every time I've ever done them. So, so you um, tell people to guess the list price and then you say like, I'll give away $500 to whoever gets it closest, right? Or yeah, whoever guesses it first. And then right. I just don't answer for like 24 hours. It just blows up, right? People yeah. are tagging other people because a thousand dollars could be a lot of money, right? People need money right now. Um, I've even done $5,000 before that was maybe a little diabolical, but That's with that said, you know, now people, they know that I'm sending them the money. So it, it works. And then I sell, I show my sellers, right? Hey, look, you know, this, this video got 2,500 comments or, you know, X amount of views. If I just posted a, a video or a picture of the house, I would never get that. So that's, that's kind of how I've utilized it. It's a good way to get people coming back to your page too, because they want to see mm -hmm. the results of it. Yes. So, uh, and they want to make money off of yeah. your page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They know to be back for more. It gets engagement yeah. and can make the money. So I think that's a great I'm way. I'm going to send and my the, whole family your page. just to... so They could all come <laughs> in on it. Um, I did a giveaway on the house in Ronkonkoma that we had just sold. I actually had every single, like every uh, person that lived there since like 1950 comment on my video. The only person that didn't comment on it was, the only person that didn't comment on it was the person that built it in 1942. I was waiting for the guy to kick open his, his casket <laughs> and comment on the video. But everybody else, like, they're fighting in the comments about, oh, no, I lived there. I lived there. Oh, we had more fun. No, we love this house. It was pretty sick. Well, so it goes to show that, you know, your, your reach is, is everything. And you'd be surprised who does follow yeah. you. <laughs> Final thing on this uh, Brock Johnson piece. He says, link in bio. Anytime you call attention to your link in your bio, no one really clicks on that. Like, because the caption has to be so good. The post has to be so good for someone to actually scroll up, click on the bio. So... Mini chat, which Coffee and Contracts uses, what we use on BAM all the time. It's an AI chatbot automation, M-A-N-Y-C-H-A-T. We could say comment the word coffee, and then you respond back to all the comments, and that's how you send them the link in the DM. So it improves engagement in the comment section and in DM. So try that instead. I love it. You, yeah. know, you know what's really cool? Uh, I just started that golf channel, right? Like the 19th hole, just because yeah. I didn't want to be posting golf content on my, on my page because I didn't think anybody would care. So I really just started like a brand new, fresh account Although I did use it for the other 20 podcasts that I've had prior. So maybe it's not brand, brand new, but like, I'm not really trying to like build it. Right. And I'm not doing all these things. I'm just winging it and having fun. And it's actually like naturally taking off. Right. So like, I'm not sitting there, you know, worrying about the hashtags. I'm not, you know, posting on my stories consistently. I'm just being very authentic, like myself. Right. And, um, 
and it's it's like doing very well. Like a lot of people are bringing it up to me, and it's like fun to almost like have that new channel, right? Like Eric, do you, if you started a new Instagram channel today about God knows what about baseball, right? Like talking Yankees or something, like that'd probably blow up. Yeah, I just I don't have time to do another channel. I've run so many Instagrams as it is. It's I can uh, I can see you having like a, a cute golden doodle channel, and you just like repost golden doodles on there. Yeah, that that is great. My entire feed is golden doodles and poodles and everything. <laughs> but we do have an Instagram for our dog Miles underscore Smiles, but I don't run it and runs it, and that's why it's only yeah. like seven hundred followers. If I ran that thing, it'd be at fifteen million by now. So maybe I need to take that. Oh, over. that's pretty good. Lilo's only got like. 500 or something. Anne yeah. is also much funnier than Eric, by the way. Anne is Eric's ghostwriter. You can tell it plain and simply just by following Miles Smiles as uh, his Instagram page. So uh, now we all know the truth behind it. <laughs> all right, on to topic number four, because we have a meeting with Tom Ferry that we are way late for. Uh, mm -hmm. On to topic number four, marketing of the week. Eric, we have a video here to play, I believe. Yes, Haley, this is submitted by Haley Ingram from Marie Lee from Tennessee, aka Move Me to Tennessee. We just had her on the Over Ass podcast, which is one of our best episodes yet, talking about how to build the perfect Instagram profile. Thing is over 2,000 views on YouTube. She does great B roll videos. So, Haley, if we could play this and then we will react to it. That was quite the, the change up there. From was the inspector in a hazmat suit? <laughs> <laughs> I just said the same. What the hell was that? Oh my yeah, god! Did anyone else catch that? Like nuclear waste. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I would change about that video. But hopefully, the audio listeners head over to YouTube because that was probably horrible just listening to it. But it's yeah. great. So it's just B roll. It's it's the entire offer process. It's a buyer consultation. It's yeah. the first showing. It's offer accepted. She has a cake. And then it's the inspection. Uh, I don't know. Haley, what do you think of this video? I think I think it's great because it doesn't have too. to just be you talking. It's just the captions and it like yeah. walks you through the entire process. I think it's a genius idea because it's so easy too. It's just like a reminder to get clips throughout like anything that you're doing as an agent throughout the day, no matter what it is. And you can use it as content. Um, and I just love how she like just put them together and it's just easy little clips, add some text over it. She didn't have to do anything. And it was like yeah. actually a really interesting video because a lot of people are curious what it actually, you can tell someone like what the process looks like of buying a home, but it's kind of hard to understand when you don't like actually see what's going on. And so I think it, it was really helpful. I don't know. I like it a lot. I, I think that was a big change of, uh, from the normal videos that we post. Usually it's like Utah page or Cassidy and it's like a, a trending like rap song and we're all sitting there like, <laughs> Y'all you know, going like this? Like that was like you know that was like a little soothing. Yeah, I saw uh, Amanda shed a tear during the video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was I was moved by that. But I do I feel like it's a good way because everybody has a different style. You know, male, female, we all have a different business style. I think it's a good way to show kind of your behind the scenes. So she did the cupcake. Somebody else might get something different. Um, and it doesn't have to be professionally produced. I mean, your phone can really do anything. Um, and like Haley said, just snipping like little clips of your day. I think that the behind the scenes now, um, those videos do really well because they're interesting, like the day in your life or daily vlogs. I know I love them, um, but I really liked that. I enjoyed it. It was unique. Like, like, yeah. yeah. It Minus makes you the hazmat. Watch. That's a little yeah, question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought it you... made it look really like legit. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, he found termites. The bottom, not a thing to worry about. Guys, he's carrying out a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> the house is on. He found a bomb in the basement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I also like it. It makes you keep watching the entire video because once you get to offer accepted, you're like, well, I'm watching this entire thing. And B roll mm -hmm. is is genius because you could just sit there, type on your computer. 
Haley, you've done a bunch of these videos where you're sitting on your computer. So it's still an Instagram reel and you just put the caption up right there as yeah. opposed to actually I'll having to talk. Like a, a, a hot take. I feel like those are you use a trending audio. It's just you in the background, like working. And then you like have a great tip or a hot yeah. tip or something. And it's just mm -hmm. the easiest reel to make. And sometimes they do really, really well. Yeah. yeah. I'll be totally honest. I didn't like it like that at first. I think it was maybe the music. Like I, Right. No disrespect. I probably maybe would have tuned out, but then as I started watching it started to make more sense and the music was very soothing and, and I did actually like enjoy it. And I would watch that all the way through, to be honest with you, I'd probably even watch it back a second time to see that hazmat suit again. And so the <laughs> engagement on that is probably through the roof. And for you to give that compliment of saying that was one of the best episodes ever. And I've actually seen it being posted by a lot of people. That's a huge, huge compliment. Um, She's to great. Her, so, so, yeah. Mar so Marie Lee just joined, I was just going to yeah, so she just joined Coffee and Contracts, and Haley, we got what two days here until the membership closes temporarily, right? So if you yeah. want to talk about that real quick, yeah, yeah, we're closing our doors for the first time ever um, on Friday. Uh, so we're not going to welcome any new members after Friday until we reopen in fall. Uh, we're working on a new website with like amazing features and all this great stuff. So we really want to focus on that and just making sure. Our current members are all taken care of. So we're, we're closing the doors and we're doing a mid-year marketing challenge. So we're like, we have weekly trainings. Marie is actually doing one on reels. Um, I'm doing the first one on Monday and, um, and we have like tasks along with it. So um, super excited about that. But yeah, so you got to get in before Friday. Get in get now. In. Go, go click. We also have a link in the description to this. Join Coffee and Contracts, best content platform in the game use code yeah. broke world, right exactly. Haley? i think it's use code broke for a little percentage off your first charge love these codes eric <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> usa use broke fourth of are... july well, well look you, <laughs> the thing with codes <laughs> if the thing with discount codes is you got to give something very succinct and memorable right like yeah. you don't want people typing in the wrong thing you don't want to say right. use discount code right. amanda palmieri because they're not exactly. even going to know how to spell Palmieri unless they're looking up right. their Instagram, you know? <laughs> type, yeah. in, type in USA for a promo code. Type <laughs> in growth. Type in <laughs> Domingo German for a, the fourth perfect game in, in Yankees baseball history for 10% exactly. off. Oh, my God. All right. Um, thank God I've been a member of Coffee and Contracts for four years. I just made an intro with Haley today to somebody, and I, I gave her the compliment that I think 99% of the industry is using the Coffee and Contracts platform. Using the code USA. 1.4 million realtors are using <laughs> contracts. Just make sure you call them on Halloween. Don't confuse them. Don't you tell them to use code USA. I think I've been following you since I got into real estate. Like you were my like my motivation. Yeah. Oh, right. One of. You were one of like my motivational accounts. Oh, that's that's Yay. nice. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> That's All right. Fantastic. Real quick, Use, let's let's like, finish this off of with <laughs> with July content ideas. Everybody, just give a few July content ideas. July's in a couple of days. Haley, what do you got coming up in July? What should I, agents I'm, be doing? I'm gatekeeping. You got to sign up. No, I'm Perfect. Just okay, there we go. No, 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 I'm just kidding. We have Fourth of July. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, halfway through the year, I think that's a good post for July. July second is actually halfway through. The year so it's a good time to check in and be like hey did you want to buy a house this year and you didn't let's talk about it um that's my idea perfect amanda do you have any july content i mean is this like real estate related because sometimes for me personally i feel like those types of things like the holiday tips or they don't like work for me i see a lot of realtors do stuff like that like you know make sure you turn off your barbecue or like do stuff like that like <laughs> don't put the barbecue next to the house um, I don't think that really works for myself or my audience, but I have found too, like I was super into doing all like tip videos, educational. I've been trying to bring my personal life a little bit like weekend things. If it's weekend trips, mm -hmm. like Hamptons, whatever it is, cause people want to see that you're a human too. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, I would say I think you should right. make a, a day in the life video, a day in the life reel. Day see, in the life I, I really want to get into that. But yeah, I feel really like hard. I cannot like, get a hold of it. Like it's I can't so do it. Pleasing to watch. Like it's just like I don't know why. I watch them at night, and I it cures my anxiety watching other people fold their laundry. It's like yeah, so, like, this is nice. I don't you know, know how I would like to always, do it. I just don't know how. You know how people always show, like even Marie Lee showed, like her coffee cup, like in the middle of the deal. Throughout mm -hmm. the entire transaction, it'd be funny if you just had like bottles of liquor in every single <laughs> shot. So it's like here's how I start my day, and there's just like a fifth of <laughs> Soli vodka right there. 
and then just slowly throughout the day, like the camera gets But also blurrier like people blurrier. film themselves getting into their cars. Like I'll see somebody like their phone set up at the curb next door and they're like, the door's opening, they're getting in. I'm like, how are they doing this? Like, yeah. Yeah. And I don't like it to that extreme where people are like recording themselves getting out of bed. I'm like, yeah. 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 Like, where is it coming from? Like, I, I don't they, know. they literally like, you have to be on another level to like, get out of bed so peacefully, set yeah. your tripod up, like bro, go back. Like I wake up like this. Or even like the skin hair. Uh, 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 oh my gosh. Hair. Yeah. The camera's right there. Like the girl's rubbing in the serum. The camera goes, it shoots forward, then it shoots back. I'm like, who is doing this? And also, if I did that, it would be horrifying if I was yeah. just doing my skin. Absolutely. Like, oh, God. The lighting's all off. The serum flies at the lens. And like, if I did a day in the life, I think oh, people would want me in prison. And Eric, that would be so funny if it was just a day in your life because Eric is probably just sitting there thinking of content ideas like, you know, throwing a basketball against his, his wall, walking the dog. Like, it's and I actually feel like yours would be so funny, like, and people would watch it. If you just did like a voiceover of like, yes, please. The, no. Dan, I've always said, if you, want, if you want a day in the life of Dan, just watch the movie Uncut Gems from start, <laughs> from start to finish. And watch Adam Sandler being chased around by a bunch of mobsters. I think. No, I think Dan should do. Like, Dan oh my should god! Like we did, and instead of the coffee cup, it should be like a vape, just midway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Six blueberry, blueberry vapes on his desk. Yeah. Oh the no god, sign on his door—you can't see it. He has a big sign that says "No," so people know not to come in. I got one oh. more thing for July content ideas. How about this? Favorite uh, Fourth of July firework spots. <laughs> Best places to watch the fireworks, right? That is actually good. You know, that is good. Go on this mountain, go That's over there. One. I don't know. I, I was will say, say I do, barbecues, yeah. but Amanda shut that down. I do send out a monthly newsletter, yeah, and I've been yeah. doing this for the last year. And uh, one of the things that seems to be a client favorite for the people in my database is things to do on Long Island. So I'll do it every month, Christmas, October. We have a lot of like little stuff that goes on. So I will say my clients do seem to like that. I provide the links for them. They go right to the website. I've had a couple people tell me they've gotten ideas of things to do with their kids because of me putting it in a newsletter. So I do like that idea, actually. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't just post a generic Happy Fourth of July Instagram post that From just Fiverr. says Happy Fourth of July and it's branded by Remax or Keller Williams. People know it's the fourth. And nobody yeah. cares and it'll get terrible engagement. I, so when people in the Facebook group go, where's the 4th of July post? I see the one, you know, I'm like, right. oh my God. You're like, well, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. We're saving you right. here. <laughs> great, great episode. Eric, uh, recap this here with our promo codes. One last time. We got code USA yes. for a discount yeah. on sign up uh, to Bam X. X. We're doing, we're doing bi-monthly live streams in there. We got the best courses in the game. We got the best Facebook group in the game. Go in there right now. It is code USA for 15% off. And check out Coffee and Contracts, Coffee and Contracts content platform. You got one day to sign up for this before she shuts the doors for two months. So get in there right now. Use code BRO. Lucid. Link in the description. <laughs> Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this. Yes. Drop your July content ideas down below. <laughs> follow Amanda Palmieri. Follow Haley Coffee and Contracts. Follow, follow me. Unfollow Danny Deals. Unfollow me. Follow <laughs> at now bam. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>